Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will start a new project. It's a Yaesu Rotor Controller G2700 SDX. The owner claims that there are suspicious noise in it when he tries to rotate his antenna system. So let's start. When we switch this controller on, there's no rotor. No antenna rotor connected, only the controller itself. We hear a sound coming from a motor. I think that's a motor which should move the pointer. But nothing happens. Obviously we have a problem. Of course we have in the moment no feedback, no position feedback from the rotor. So I have to open it and to simulate an external rotor, especially the position to see what's going on there. I open the case, still the same sound. Here we have uh, the motor, the motor unit, which is obviously running because we hear the noise. The pointer is not moving. Here we have a potentiometer. It's the feedback of the position. I looked a bit around, a little bit around, and I found this, a broken rubber belt. This belt is there to connect the motor to the drive, to the tooth wheels. I'm quite sure when the, <coughs> the rubber is okay, this unit will work again. It's not so easy as I thought. The access to the wheel on one side is not directly possible because one of the shafts is going through this wheel, so I have to disassemble this unit. To get access to this unit, I have to unplug everything unmount this, unmount this for screws, then I have access to these four screws, and then I can flip this unit out carefully. And I have access to this unit, and here we can see the problem, uh, not on this side, on the other side. This big wheel here. has an axis which, which only ends up there, but this tooth wheel has to be removed to get access to this one, to uh, install the, the ribbon, the ribbon wire, the ribbon belt. So I need to open this unit, but to get access to the screws which hold it together, I have to unmount the plastic, and to get to unmount the plastic I have to unmount the pointer. Everything has to be unmounted to get access to this ribbon belt. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Okay, I set it to 270 degrees as it was. I can uh, actuate it now with the by hand. I carefully set it to 270. And now the gear is open. I could remove these four screws. Take this metal cover away and now we have access. Here is one pulley from the motor. The other one is underneath here, this one, but I do not get direct access to it. No, it doesn't work. Because there is also a closed wheel here which has no space. I cannot go through it. And the moment I'm thinking in four dimensions, three dimensions with this gear, whether it's really necessary to open it, and it is necessary, I cannot avoid it. And the fourth dimension is time. What is the easiest and fastest way to solve it? I've seen that this uh, pointer here can be adjusted in any position. So the end position here of this pot has to be specified. I will turn the pot in one direction. Ah, this pot is an, is an endless. Is it an endless pot? Yes. Okay, I have to realign the position. That's not so difficult. But first I have to remove at least this contact, maybe this contact also. And then I can take out the wheels. The switches are removed. Now I get access to this Allen screw. The only critical uh, relation in this drive is the position of this coded wheel in relation to the 
potential meter and here I have a, a coding a marking of the wheel the screw and this uh, mark has to be reinstalled exactly in this position so then we are on the right way so then the contacts have the right coding in relation to the position that's all I have to do again and now I can take off the other wheels it's rather easy oops not to lose anything I only have to note ah okay here's a securing ah I see it's not necessary to open it I can slip out this wheel in this direction or not yes it's possible and now finally I have access to the wheel where the belt has to be installed the belt I uh, found some uh, solutions in the net there are a lot of uh, sets of belts available in the market as you see here for phono equipment walkman and so and there's a, a belt which should fit I've chosen this type the wheels are in place again the iron screw is set do not over tighten it it's a dangerous construction the <coughs> thread of the iron screw is in the plastic when we over tighten it it uh, gives a sound like crack that's it <coughs> it's an old plastic well this can be now installed the four screws okay and this is the uh, fixture for the pointer another problem is this incandescent bulb you see the heat marks over it and there is inside uh, an interruption the filament sometimes it it makes light sometimes it's dark this filament acts like a fuse when it is shocked mechanically and it interrupts or it makes contact or vice versa but this is not a good solution I will replace it by some um, LEDs the supply voltage is 10 volt AC so I think I can uh, switch two or maybe three LEDs in series with a series resistor and a rectifier to uh, replace these incandescent bulbs and to avoid further damage the two white LEDs are in place now, they are in series. I cut two small slots here into the plastic uh, for better uh, fixture of the LEDs. This is a positive negative connection. Now I will add a small uh, rectifier to it, filter cap and a series resistor. Bridge rectifier filter cap with 10 microfarad and a series resistor 1 kilo ohm with this configuration and an input AC input voltage of approximately 10 volt RMS that's 14 volt peak we have uh, a current of 8 or 9 milliamps through the diodes I have measured nominal current is 20 milliamps but uh, 8 or 9 are sufficient for a good uh, display a heat shrink two cable ties and the whole unit is isolated and stable and now we can reassemble the whole uh, rotor controller and test it now it's time for a first test first check is the calibration of the pointer for this purpose uh, I've connected a, a small potentiometer 500 ohms this potentiometer simulates the potentiometer in the rotor because this um, pointer here indicates this, uh, the direction of the rotor when it is turned and I can simulate it when I go to the left side full left it will stop at zero this can be adjusted on the rear side and when I go fully right with this potentiometer it goes not to 360 it goes up to 450 degrees when we are uh, beyond 360 then the LED overlap will come now then we will observe that the pointer goes over 360 at 360 again we will have, have the overlap indication that means the rotor is not at 
30 degrees, it is at 390 degrees and we should turn it or move it into the counterclockwise direction. And now observe it, pointer reaches zero, overlap. That's also okay. Now we are at 450. That's it. 360 plus 120 is 480. Next check will be the output of the control voltage for the rotor, for the motor. Up to now we see there is no output because we do not move the motor by the keys here. Under normal operations we will use the left and right key which can be read here. This causes an output voltage to the DC motor and the output voltage is reversed whether we go left counterclockwise or right into the clockwise direction. I've simulated here a, a load of 10 ohms, 4 R7, 2 times in series. This is a mechanically centered voltmeter, plus minus 30 volt. And when I go to the left side, you see we have a voltage of 10 volt and it, it increases up to 15 volt. And when we go right, And the motor goes into the other direction. It's done with two relays and the polarity is simply swapped by two relays. When I go to left, this means the rotor rotates left. And this would mean that the pot simulated here also goes to the left side. Well, that's okay. Yeah, a little bit warm. But I think the, this load is okay. I don't know the exact load of the um, of the motor, but at 15 volt we have 1.5 amps. I think that this is sufficient. The output transistor is a 2N3055, the well-known old, old uh, working horse. This transistor here gets a little bit warm. When we have permanent output, yes, I think this is the current for, for what the uh, motor is designed, maybe a little bit more, but that's not a problem. And now let's check the other function, the preset function. Preset means that we can choose the setting on this pot. We've chosen zero degrees, what it is. Okay, when, when we go back to zero, it switches off. We have the zero setting. We can switch it off. Now we go to 90 degrees. Now we have 90 degrees. When I go to preset, we are at zero, remember? Setting. And when I go up to 90, then it stops when I go further over 90 degrees, then the motor is forced to rotate into the clockwise position. Let's go to 180 and we move this motor slowly to 180. And you see at 180, it switches off. Let's go to 360 to make it easier. I'm simulating a slowly rotating rotor and at 360 the output voltage should go down to zero. Okay, it's not exactly 360, a little bit off. There are pots on the rear side where it can be adjusted, but I switch it off. But uh, we, we see the uh, scale is adjusted enough. Fine tuning can, can be done by the owner. So we are now at the end of this project. It was a little project. No big efforts. Only a broken belt. 
But as Murphy says, the accessibility of a component is inverse to the probability of failure. So the, I think this rubber belt is the weakest point of this drive mechanism and it is hard to get access to it, as we have seen. Another problem was the lighting of the uh, scale of the bezel. The incandescent bulb caused a lot of heating, overheating in a small area. Plastic was melted, so a replacement by LEDs is always a good solution in such a case. Now this uh, rotor controller can go back to the owner. Stay healthy, stay tuned and see you on this channel.